Good morning, everybody. It is great to join you in our virtual worship on Sunday morning. As scripture says, whenever two or three are gathered together on Facebook Live, Jesus is in our midst. Uh, it's wonderful to be with you. I just want to start with a few announcements. The first one being that I'd like to create a some sort of a historical record about our worship during this time in, pandem in pandemic. And to do that, I want to invite you to take a picture of your worship at home, whether it's a picture of your computer screen, a picture of your home altar, however it is that you are worshiping on Sunday mornings or during the week at home, I want you to um, take a screenshot of it, take a picture. And if you would either text me that picture or email me the picture, I'd like to compile them in some sort of record for St. Paul's for the generations to come. I am also, as you might have read in our weekly happenings, compiling uh, your answers to the question, and it's a quote from Exodus, I'm, leaning, I'm learning that the Lord is among us, dot, 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 finish that statement uh, with, with however you're learning that God is in our midst, and email me that as well. And I'm going to create a St. Paul's poem from your answers. I've already received some most beautiful reflections and I wanna invite um, as many as possible to uh, offer those as well. Uh, the, this morning's bulletin can be found on our website, www.stpaulschatham.org. And while you're there on our website, if you would also take the time to uh, on the donate button, since we can't pass our offering plates on Sundays anymore, if you could make a donation for our ministry, it would uh, be most appreciated and it would enable us to continue to um, have an effective and flourishing ministry at this time. Finally, um, our coffee hour will be held by Zoom after our worship, and that link, all you have to do is, is click on the link. The link can be found on our website um, or in our weekly happenings email as well. So with that, we will begin our worship. Again, the bulletin can be found on our website. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, but we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our first reading is from Acts of the Apostles. Those who have been baptized devoted themselves to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. We will read Psalm 23 together in unison. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> This is a reading from the gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. 
Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And the images of the shepherd who leads us through troubled times is one that is so important to us right now. This gospel was written around the year 90, about 60 years after Jesus ascended, and 20 years approximately after the destruction of the Second Temple by the Romans in Jerusalem. And this community, the Johannine community as it's called, for whom this gospel was written, they were going through a very difficult time a tumultuous time. They had been expelled from the synagogue because they believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And being expelled from the synagogue in first century uh, Jewish tradition wasn't like leaving a church today. Back in the first century, between religious life and life. The religious life permeated the entire society. You were born into a religion and you stayed in that religion your whole life. And so it was for the Jews. But when Jesus came, Jesus came to reform Judaism. But what happened was a separate sect came about. And so the people in John's community were some of those who saw Jesus as the Messiah and who followed him as the Messiah. And so they were expelled from the temple, from the synagogue, and their lives were turned upside down because it not only divided them from their worship and their worship life and their worship community, it tore apart families it tore apart villages because they were now considered outcasts and they were ostracized. And for them to be ostracized, they had to be ostracized by all of those who were still a part of the Jewish community. And so for them, there was so much turmoil. They were frightened, they were isolated, they were divided. Some of them may even have become homeless or have gone hungry because they were taken out of the community. And so the, the Gospel of John speaks to them. It's trying to hold them together and hold them fast and keep them from returning and turning away from Jesus and returning to their old life, their old community. And so this image of a good shepherd is so very important to them. It's a life-saving text. It gives them hope in their isolation. It gives them hope in their fear. And it gives them hope that Jesus is still with them. Jesus is the one who will guide and protect them 
Jesus says to them, I am the good shepherd. I am here. And I am caring for you even now. It's very similar, although the circumstances are different for us. But there are so many similarities to our current circumstances. Because we feel frightened, many of us. We feel isolated. We feel divided. We feel frightened that maybe we won't have a job or we won't have a home. We won't be able to feed our children. We don't know when it's going to end. And so this gospel today is just as important to us. Because that message, that message of the Good Shepherd, we hear Jesus, we hear him call our name. He knows us by name. Marcus Bohr talks about this. He's a theologian who's written many books on these subjects. And he talks about, in John's Gospel, how enlightenment is a theme in John's Gospel, but enlightenment for John is knowing God is in relationship with, with us. To know God is eternal life. And he talks about how the cultivation of that relationship with God brings us closer to God so that when we hear God's voice, we know it. When we hear Jesus, we know his voice. We know to follow him. And it's so important for us now to continue to see Jesus as the good shepherd, to see Jesus as the one with whom we can put our trust and our lives. Because the good shepherd takes care of all of the needs of the sheep. He cares for them or she cares for them, loves them, protects them. There's value. He values the sheep that he cares for. God values us. We are God's flock. And when we are in deep relationship with God, then we can trust just a bit more in times like these. When we lose our hope, when we lose our joy, our will to go on, our belief in love, our belief in goodness, when all of those things fall from us and we need someone to pick up those pieces, Jesus, as the good shepherd, reaches down into the dust where they've fallen and he picks them up and he holds them for us. When we can't carry things ourselves, he carries them for us until the time comes when we are strong again and our love is restored and our hope is restored. God looks out for us in so many ways. It's as if God is the keeper of all of those things that we have lost. Not just the hope and the joy and all of those things that we may be missing right now, but also those people that we have lost, the ones we love who have passed over. God as the shepherd, Jesus as the shepherd, comes for them too. He calls them by name and opens the gate and they walk through. So they are not lost. They are found. Even though they may not be with us now. God is holding them. And they have peace. This 
will not last forever. And Jesus shows us the way. The way to live. The way to live abundantly by giving and loving through compassion and tenderness and strength. Jesus shows us the way to live as God calls us to live. We can be good shepherds too. We can be shepherds for all of those around us. Some we know and some we don't know. I'll leave you with a story of a good shepherd who lives down the block from me. On St. Patrick's Day, one of my very dear friends, Sandy, became ill with COVID-19, and so did her husband. And Sandy has severe asthma, so she ended up getting hospitalized. And she was hospitalized for two weeks, and she almost died. Thank God she did. And she came home. And Sandy is a force to be reckoned with. She is the most generous, loving, kind-hearted person I have ever met in my life. And her husband is as well. And she is a force to be reckoned with. And she decided that she was going to get up and she was going to walk every day, starting with the second day after she got home. And so that day, I happened to be outside. And I saw her walking down the street. She had her, her mask on, she had her inhalers, she had everything that she needed. And she knew she probably wouldn't make it very far. She made it to my house. And we talked, and as frail as she was, and she was very frail, her strength was in her. And then she had enough. She became very tired and she turned around to walk back to her house. And her husband was coming up the street. I could see them so far down the road toward their house and her walking very slowly putting every foot down intentionally just to keep herself going while she waited for her husband to come and help her. And in that moment, I saw Jesus walking toward her in the body of her husband. He had not been as sick as she had been. And so he was able to walk more strongly and he was very quick. And the love that I could see in his eyes, when he reached her, he stopped. He looked at her with such love and tenderness. And then he turned and stood beside her and put her arm on his arm and walked as slowly as she needed to walk while looking down at her and holding her hand and walked her home. We should all do our best in this time to be good shepherds and to show the world what Jesus does for us and what Jesus calls us to be. Amen. We continue with the great I am statements from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Your light drives out the darkness. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Your way has brought true hope. 
I am the resurrection and the life. You broke the power of death. I am the bread of life. You feed and fill the hungry. I am the true vine. Your life becomes our life. I am the good shepherd. You guide and then lead us on. At this time, I will invite you into a time of silent, silent prayer and reflect reflection so that you can focus and think on the ways that you have encountered the Good Shepherd, the ways that you notice the risen Christ in your presence right now. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain, and sustain us through your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship with you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite you to add your petitions, your prayers to the comment section of our Facebook page. Uh, and we will continue to pray with you in the week ahead. Uh, and also you can pray either silently or aloud for those who are on your heart right now. We pray as those who died this week. We pray for Anna Patrick, Richard Almond, Marjorie Reinhardt, and Marjorie Watsky. 
We pray for those who are sick, for Jean, Paul, Hamlesh, Alan, for Shirley, Rachel, and Rebecca, and Marianne, and Phil and Danielle. Let us now say together the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, Lord make us make instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. And to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God of life and love, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with Christ in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now, today, and always. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join us for coffee hour uh, on Zoom. It was wonderful worshiping with you today. Take care. <laughs>